Yeah, great to see everybody here today. So my name is Josh Williams. I'm the uh, I'm the sales manager at Shipping Easy. Um, I've probably spoken to uh, a lot of you uh, Shipping Easy current customers uh, who are in here uh, at one point or another. I've been around for a good while on at the company. And uh, for those of you who aren't current customers, I hope to speak to you one day too. So, um, but I'm excited to be here. We're going to do something really cool. Um, so. We're pretty lucky today. We're going to get to speak with with uh, Jonathan Beal, um, who is the founder and director of uh, Sir Toto Copper. So Jonathan uh, gave us a little bit of background um, on his company just a little bit ago. But for those of you uh, who are coming in now, um, we'll make sure that we get that again from him. Um, so he and his, uh, as he referred to his red-haired maven of uh, Sir Toto <laughs> Copper Michelle, uh, run uh, just an incredible company. They produce top-of-the-line handcrafted copperware. Um, I, you know, will definitely give you the the URL to go to their website and see what they've got. Just some beautiful, beautiful stuff there. Um, so we're going to be asking him a few questions about how he grew his vision into a successful business and. Um, well, like Rob said, we're going to open up with, uh, you know, at the end with some Q&A. Uh, so make sure that you, you know, put your questions down in, in the uh, Zoom chat. Um, we'll make sure that we'll, you know, we have people keeping an eye on that. And uh, we'll make sure to get your questions to him, you know, um, toward the end of our interview time. But before we do, um, it's five o'clock somewhere. So um, <laughs> it's time for a drink, right? Um, for those of you who received um, the cocktail kit, um, that came from uh, Jennifer and her company Tap Trailer, um, and she's here with us. So if you have the ingredients uh, for your cocktail kit, um, she's going to uh, walk us through and show us how to make a Fernet Mule. So um, if, you, if you don't have that, make sure you take some notes. Uh, but Jennifer, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and you can kind of give us uh, the professional mixology view of how to make this mule. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me today. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, although I don't think it probably took much convincing. I feel like alcohol <laughs> is a pretty easy, easy draw for people. <laughs> so that's what we hear at least. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll go ahead and just sort of introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Disotel. Um, I am one third part owner of Tap Trailer Co. I have two partners, one of whom is my sister. Our third partners actually, and I don't know if anyone was fans of boy bands in the 90s, but if you were and you listened to a group called NSYNC, then you would know our third partner. His name is Lance Bass. Um, and between the three of us, we run Tap Trailer Co. We are a live events company. I should say pre-COVID, we were a live events company um, and are starting to get back into that now. But we do bar catering. So we cater everything from, you know, 1,500 person corporate events for Netflix down to, you know, 50, uh, 50 person wedding. So it really runs the gamut. And then we also do bar operations for festivals. So uh, for instance, in October, we're going to be do doing three Halloween festivals, one in LA, one in actually Dallas, uh, and then another one in New York. So I always say our job doesn't suck. We get, we get a deal with liquor. <laughs> <for Halloween>, so, <laughs> but um, I am going to make up a drink for you guys today. So you have something to sip on while you're listening to Jonathan and everyone else speak about shipping easy. And I'm actually interested to sit in and listen as well. So, but um, if you guys have not unboxed everything in your box, uh, go ahead and do that and get everything laid out. Um, in terms of tools, you will need your shaker. Everyone should have received a bubble tap branded shaker. I have just a, a basic Boston shaker, bartender shaker. So you'll need that. You'll need to fill it about a third to a half of the way with ice. So if you need to go grab ice, do that. You also need a rocks glass and I'm gonna fill mine with ice here in a minute. Um, it's very hot here in Los Angeles and I hear it is in some of your parts as well. So I don't have my ice in yet because it will melt. So I'll do that last minute. Um, you will also need your jigger. Uh, this is, it happens to be the most important bar tool in your entire at-home bar kit. And I will explain why when we're, when we're measuring out. Um, and then you will need a spoon to stir or a knife or a fork or anything. Um, and then all of your ingredients. So if anyone needs to run and get ice or, or anything, now is the time to do it. And then I'll just wait like a minute for everyone to get that stuff together. I'm gonna grab my ice. My handy ice. And then we should be good to go in one minute. Looks like, wow, everyone's prepared. There's 
ready to go. I know. I love this. I'm seeing everybody get their stuff out. This is really cool. I know. Hey, you guys came prepared. I love it. Um, I will say a little bit of history of the mule. Um, it, it was created actually in New York by a bar director. Um, and I always forget the name. I can look it up in a minute. The, it was a hotel bar, but it was created um, like a lot of cocktails are in that they had all this excess product. And so he was trying to figure out what he could make, uh, you know, to get, go through some of this product. And he came up with the mule. Now, the difference in this one is we're using Frené Branca. Uh, Fernet is a bitter Amaro and an Amaro is, um, it's a, it's a digestif. It's an Italian herbal liqueur. It's made from herbs and spices. Um, and it's like I said, a digestif. So there's two categories. There's digestifs and there's apertifs. Now apertifs are meant to stimulate your appetite. So that's like Campari and Aperol, like Aperol spritzes. Digestifs are, um, for example, they're Amaro, Sherry, uh, Vermouth, uh, port, all those things that are meant to settle your stomach. So they're meant to be consumed after a meal. So this is one of them. And I love Fernet. I actually was, uh, interestingly enough, like a week ago, I was in Mexico and they, they serve Fernet after dinner, um, which is very common, but more in Italy and other places, not so much in Mexico, but, uh, is there any chance I can get one off? This one? Um, yeah, I just want to make sure I can. And if you guys do have questions, you can drop them into the chat. Okay, cool. So we'll just jump in and get started. I'm going to go ahead and grab my shaker and put that front and center. That's going to be, uh, does everyone, by the way, is everyone ready to go? I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anyone behind. I think it is. Okay, cool. All right. So first things first, our Tito's vodka. And I'm sure that most of you uh, are very familiar with Tito's vodka being in Texas, so I don't have to give you too much information. Uh, but obviously, Tito's great brand. It's most people's go-to. They did an, an excellent job, I think, of marketing the whole gluten-free aspect. It is a great product, especially for the price point. I mean, you really won't get um, a better vodka for this price point. So what you guys have is a little 50 milliliter bottle. You're going to put that whole thing in the shaker. Uh, 50 milliliters or what people call airplane bottles or mini bottles. Those are, um, 1.5 ounces and they are actually a standard bar pour. So anytime you go to a bar and you have like a margarita or Paloma or any sort of shake and drink, it's going to be an ounce and a half unless you tip the bartender and then you'll get more. Uh, <laughs> all right. So then once you've got your Tito's in there and I said this earlier, but I never, usually I would give you recommendations for other vodkas I like, but I'm just not even going to go there with, with Texans on the call. So <laughs> I don't want to offend nice anyone. <laughs> all right. So the next up is we're going to take our little mini bottle of lime juice. Now, you know, as bartenders, we always live by the rule that fresh is best. And that is true 99% of the time. So if you have fresh lime, you know, that's great. That's ideal. But the lime juice will work, um, you know, just as well. I will say there is an exception, uh, pineapple juice. Pineapple juice is more ideal for cocktails, canned or bottled than it is fresh. So that's one uh, product that you can you can use can. All right, so we're gonna use one ounce of lime juice. So go ahead and measure out one ounce. And I believe your jigger should be three quarters of an ounce and an ounce and a half. That's the combo I think we sent. So if you want, you can just kind of measure it three quarters of the way up on the ounce and a half side and you'll be fine. Um, now jiggers, by the way, are the most important bar tool. I get this question a lot. People will say, what's like the most important bar tool to have at home? Uh, it is without a doubt jiggers. And that's because craft cocktails are all about precision. Pre precision, balance, consistency, things that you will only get when you measure things. Uh, so I always say get a complete set of jiggers, like everything from a quarter ounce all the way up to two ounces. Um, from Sir Toto Copper, of course. So, uh, <laughs> all right. And next up, we're going to take our Fernet, our bitter Amaro Italian liqueur. And we're just going to do a half an ounce. A little bit goes a long way with Fernet. I mean, I can sip on it after dinner by itself, but if you've never had it before, it is, it is a specific taste. So you're going to just do a half an ounce. Now I will say if you're ever without a jigger, you can actually use, um, tablespoons, tablespoon, one tablespoon is an ounce and a half. So that's always a measurement tool you can use as well. All right. So then that's going to be it for what we're shaking. Cause we're going to top off with ginger beer, but let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. 
I almost forgot bitters. <laughs> Sorry, bitters. Um, you should have received a little bottle of Scrappy's bitters and bitters are also a digestive. Um, they are actually a highly concentrated flavoring agent. So I, I mean, I love bitters. I put bitters in almost every cocktail. It's really the simplest way with a few drops to completely change the flavor profile of a cocktail. So I highly recommend them. I know I got Cassandra into them after the last session. Um, and I'm sure everyone knows Angostura, right? That's like the bitters that everyone knows from old fashions. Does anyone know the story of Angostura, why their label's so tall? So it, it actually drives me nuts because it gets so tattered and like, you know, every, it rips and everything. So uh, Angostura was created by two brothers named the Seagirt brothers. They were um, in Trinidad. They actually, the company is still based there. But now remember, I do business with my sister. So these are two brothers and they, uh, when they created the product early on, they entered it into a competition. And so one brother was responsible to purchase the bottles and the other brother was responsible to print the labels and they didn't really communicate on size. So uh, that is how they ended up with a label that was way too tall for the bottle. Uh, but the judge told them, you should make that your signature design feature. And they did, and that is why it is still like that today. Drives me crazy, it gets ripped and it falls off and it just, whatever, but anyways. Uh, but bitters, they are a digestive. So again, they help settle your stomach. If you ever um, are hungover or you have an upset stomach or you're nauseous, uh, a bartender will make you bitters in either ginger ale or club soda. And it really does work. So let's go ahead and we're just going to drop in three drops of the bitters. Little bit goes a long way, not dropper fulls, just drops. And I love that, you know, there's all these companies out there now with craft bitters and artisanal bitters. Back in the day, it really was Angostura and Peixades, which is out of New Orleans. Uh, but now, nowadays, I mean, there's so many bitters companies that are doing some really interesting things. So, all right, so let's slap the, uh, the shaker on the top on our shaker. Now I have what's called a Boston shaker. Uh, Jonathan, you have a Boston shaker. These are professional bartender shakers. The reason that we don't use cobbler shakers, which I know is what you all got in your boxes, um, is we don't use those in the bar world because those tops and kind of the caps on top, they get uh, really cold and they get frozen and they get stuck. So for us in the bartending world, it would really slow us down and be really annoying. So uh, we use these Boston tin on tin shakers. So let's go ahead and we're gonna shake for like 10 seconds. Let's just get this stuff combined. All right, so we don't need a lot of dilution in this uh, cocktail. In a lot of cocktails, you wanna get about 10% dilution, which is about 10 to 15 seconds shaking. Very important. So let's go ahead then and take our ginger beer, or you can strain out your cocktail. That's also an option. You're gonna get a very different color than you would normally get in a mule. All right, so then you're gonna go ahead and take your ginger beer, pop that top off, and just fill the rest of the glass with ginger beer. Now I like to give it a good stir. It's all mixed up. Okay, and then last but not least, of course, we have to garnish everything. I have a dehydrated lime wheel. You guys should have a dehydrated lime wheel and some dehydrated or sugared candy ginger. And you can just take the bamboo garnish stick and thread it through the ginger if you'd like. And then also lie that um, dehydrated lime wheel right on top. Now we like using dehydrated fruit in the bar world because it's, it makes a drink look fancy, but also from our standpoint, we can actually batch a ton ahead of time and they have a great shelf life and we're not wasting a bunch of fresh fruit every night that we're cutting up. So I love using dehydrated fruit uh, and yeah, it makes, makes everything look pretty. So you guys can go ahead and throw that, that lime wheel right on top and you are good to go. That's going to be your Fernet Mule. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you for joining today. Mm. Yummy. Yeah, I see a bunch of head nods. <laughs> I think they agree with you, Jennifer. It's got that, that bitter herbal quality to it. Beautiful. Jennifer, thank you so much. 
Thank you guys. Thanks so much. I'm gonna hang out and yeah, please do. Today. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we got a, so we got a we got a recipe, we got a uh, a demo, and we got a history lesson all in one. I really appreciated that. So that's such a cool story about the Angostura brothers. Uh, I know that's not their name, but you know, so funny. That is so funny. All right. Thanks, everyone. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and dive in um, to our, uh, you know, the main part of our time together here. So um, I do want to introduce to you uh, Jonathan Bell. Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I just wanted to kind of start out, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're from, uh, family, kids, dogs, all of that, all of that good stuff. So we can really uh, get to know you. Sure. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for uh, reaching out and inviting us down here. I um, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about myself. It's uh, <laughs> something everybody enjoys. <laughs> um, and uh, I, uh, I've got one kid. Uh, I've got two dogs. Uh, they're out with my dad right now somewhere. And I'm from Austin, Texas. Um, I started uh, doing this copper work in the late 90s. Um, and previously, I was going to be an internet millionaire in the dot-com thing, along with a whole lot of other people. And uh, we went from internet millionaire with stock options to just a couple thousand bucks of severance pay. And, and so I lit out for Mexico to go hang out on the beach. Um, and driving down there, I came across uh, some copper stuff. A guy was uh, an itinerant copper peddler was selling his stuff on the side of the road. And um, I thought, wow, that stuff is beautiful. I bet I could bring it back and sell it for Christmas time. And, um, and thus began Saratoto Copper. So about that's 25 years ago. About 25 years. That's incredible. So you, you, you think you're going to hit it big in, in, <laughs> in, you know, like a lot of us did <laughs> and yes. um, kind of had that story. Uh, it didn't work out. And it's like, I'm going to take a road trip, go down to Mexico and you're driving down you see this guy on the side of the road, kind of what drew your eye to, to pull off and actually stop, get out of the car. And, you know, you and, never, you never know where inspiration is, is going to hit you. Yeah. Um, and I thought that selling information on the internet was a brilliant million dollar idea. Um, and apparently it just takes a little more than that. And um, that's why the dot com thing busted. Um, and so Really, it was just uh, people like shiny things. Uh, we'd been driving all night and I look over, you know, there's something kind of dazzling in the morning sun and um, it was some copper. And then what really drew me into it was uh, um, the, the handwork that was in there and just like how the piece was made. It was just so, you know, honest. It wore it like, uh, you know, every one of these hammer marks is like an alphabet about, um, about how this piece is constructed. Um, and having, you know, gone to college and really all of my work being kind of uh, abstract or mental, just uh, feeling something that was real. Um, it just, I just felt like, oh, there's something, there's something here. There's some kind of story here. And, and, uh, and I love a good story. So um, yeah. I decided to uh, turn my truck around and put all my severance pay into uh, a, a small truckload of copper. In incredible. <laughs> um so that, that's a great kind of lead into uh tell us give us a little background on um on just well one i mean I, i'm fascinated because copper is you know you see the copper where it and it, it does have those little indentations um i like the way that you said it. it's like a little alphabet you know to to the piece and each piece is unique that way um give us a little insight in terms of you know, the care and the, and the craftsmanship and the art that goes into creating these pieces and a little bit about Sortoto and kind of where that comes from. Sure. Um, well, I think uh, copper is just, you know, as far as a material to sell, I have kind of a slight advantage because it's been around for thousands of years and people just have a almost like a genetic disposition of copper. People just love to reach out and touch the material. And as you said, like you see this, um, you know, the dimpling in there, the hammering, that's part of how it's done. Um, you know, in addition, I, when I went down to the village that the man said that this, all this stuff was made, uh, the whole village has been doing copper work there. And you walk around and you hear all this like ting, ting, ting. Everybody's like 
hammering out the copper stuff. Um, and they've been doing that down there for over a thousand years. And so all of a sudden it was just like this story that I, uh, that I jumped into. Um, and it's this, this region in Mexico, it's called Pazcuaro. It's in Michoacan. Um, it's kind of famous or notorious for a lot of other things. Um, but copper is one of the, is one of the things that comes out of there and it's been there for, like I said, a thousand years. Um, and Cerrotodo just kind of grew out of this sense of adventure. I was not sitting in a desk. I was like down there hanging out, working with these artisan guys. Um, I ended up apprenticing down there. And um, what I do now is very different from what I started off doing. Um, I'm not sure, um, you know, and so that's one of the things I guess about, uh, about a business and that a lot of people are looking for out there is, you know, kind of a story and what's, you know, what's behind the product. And, um, you know, we very much embrace our story. It's not so much that we embrace it, it embraces us. We just, we're just kind of part of it. I feel like we're part of our story. And as anything, we're kind of a vehicle to, to just share this stuff um, with, yeah, with the rest of the world, with the market, I guess. Um, and uh, what Saratoga is now, as, as I mentioned, has evolved quite a bit. And uh, when mm -hmm. I first started doing this, I would just you know, work and fill up my truck with some copper. And then I would drive around to a town and I would open a phone book. I don't know if anybody knows what a phone book is anymore, <laughs> but I would like grab a phone book in a hotel and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to call up all the caterers. And, um, and it was great. And really what it was, it was just, I had to like hone this story to talk to people and, yeah. um, and really just being able to reach people. And then on top of that, it was like, um, just delivering, giving good customer service. And, and I kind of learned about just like dealing with people and listening to them and hearing what they needed and, and how, what I do can meet their needs. Um, and so it was, that was progression. And, and I did that for many years, wearing out the seat of my pants, driving around the U S and I got a little tired of that. And so the business has always just kind of evolved into, um, into new, uh, into new manifest new manifestations and uh yeah um let me let me let me just stop because i'll keep rambling and rambling and rambling so well please, i'll keep asking and please, asking and asking some so, questions what, yeah. what direction do we go from here yeah for sure and for those of you just to you know remind if you have questions for jonathan go ahead and put them down in the chat we'll make sure to keep an eye on that um we may touch on some stuff that you had a question for but i'm sure there's many that that i'm not gonna ask that would be um you know great for for jonathan to speak to so but um, kind of, you know, from what you said, Jonathan, I, you know, today's focus is all about putting down a foundation for success. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you kind of gave us a little bit of a glimpse in terms of what that looked like with you starting out as, you know, what was going to be a business owner and, and you know, driving around, spending a lot of time in the car, flipping through the phone book, you go in door to door kind of thing. Um, when did you notice that this idea of kind of creating things out of copper and giving it to the world was kind was kind of taking off and, and, you know, when you notice that kind of what strategies did you implement to, to, or how did you kind of pivot, um, or maybe change some things to be, oh, you know what I should, I should keep an eye on this, or I should maybe try this. If I'm going to be successful, I need to, I need to be nimble and I need to, to move a little bit. Sure. I think being a, a smaller business has allowed us to respond quite a bit. And the business has been through a couple of iterations um, from being just more where I didn't ship anything. Um, it was all just uh, direct contact. Occasionally I would have to like, some of you like, Oh, you, you know, we met you out in LA last year. Can you ship us, you know, 20 more platters? And I would be scrounging through the dumpster, looking for old boxes, trying to like, you know, and then go into my uncle's place to, try and ship something out. Uh, he does coffee. <laughs> um, and I think when I realized that people still wanted to buy more stuff from me, I was like, Oh, I, I guess I need to like, uh, you know, keep a hold of these receipts and everything of, you know, invoices of selling people. Um, and that was, that was one point. Um, and I think I remember I got a cell phone and I thought that was amazing that I could talk and do business and still be just like driving around, um, you know, going camping some weekend. Um, but I think really uh, things changed 
when I went to I I went to a show. It was in it was in Atlanta. I think I've been doing Atlanta and New York and um uh awesome. the one in Atlanta, yeah. It was it was Atlanta, New York, and Dallas. And Dallas, yeah. Okay. And one of those shows, uh Oprah, Oprah's people. I want to say me and Oprah like this, but it's not that way. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but she probably does have people. Yeah, <laughs> she has people. Works, yeah. yeah, Adam. Her, her, her yeah. guys. Adam, like that. Adam was like, hey, this is great stuff. And I didn't really know he was. He's like, oh, we should put a little set together. I had never put a set together of things like, oh, combine some stuff so people have a package. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're like, maybe, we'll, maybe we'd like to do this. And they did. And they, it was like one of their top 10 gifts in 2014. And then all uh, of a sudden it just yeah. like... Poof, was an Oprah's favorite. Yeah, Oprah's mm -hmm. favorite. And it just, you know, kind of exploded. And, and I realized that I, like all these, I was just scrambling to keep up with everything. And that put us in this momentum of uh, really there was like a direct to public, uh, the consumer, because previously I've been making stuff for hotels and restaurants, sure. doing custom bars. Right. Um, but this entered us into the world of the consumer. And we were kind of like, we had these Moscow mule mugs and we just had all of these just different systems. Michelle came on real early in that era. I was, was going like, to ask, you know, at that point, did you kind of feel a little bit of the heat of, oh, okay, people want this stuff, which means I need to figure out how to get them this stuff. And, you know, what, tell us about a little bit about that time. Um, you know, did you kind of see that coming and had time or were you like creating and making and producing, you know, goods, you know, kind of on a, as, as the orders were coming in, you know, just as fast. I, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't really see it coming until all of a sudden it like, it like hit us. It was there. Everything yeah. was, it just, it, it really was like exponential growth from doing 10. A friend of mine was like, Hey, make me some Moscow mule mugs. I made 10 next month. Some people saw them. I made 20 next month. We made 40. We came up on, we, we, uh, Amazon approached us and they said they wanted our goods up on Amazon. Um, that's a whole different discussion, but mm -hmm. uh, that there was a lot of growth in there and it just kept going exponentially. And I saw, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I was about three months out and I was like, Hey, went back down to the shop that I'd set up in Mexico. I was like, we need to just like start making as many of these as we can. <laughs> okay. And so we just, we did. And then I was up here trying to figure out all the systems for doing that. And this was way before we got in with, uh, with shipping. Easy. Yeah. Um, and so what were you, what was it like? Um, so now it was, you know, instead of kind of making something and driving over to, you know, the business, handing it to them and they give you a check or whatever. Now it's these is from people all over the world. And, and what were you, um, how did you start online as an e-commerce business? Um, really, I think uh, Amazon was, uh, was how we started because they, they approached us. It was after, Things kind of fell apart with the whole 2008 uh, housing crisis. We felt that crunch significantly. Mm -hmm. Things fell apart. Um, and then it was around 2009, 2010, Amazon called. They're like, we want to get your stuff on here. They were expanding a lot. And they brought us, they brought us online. So they, they really had a lot of like their system. I was fortunate that there's, I didn't have to build all my systems up. They kind of organized us. So oh, this is how you do an invoice. This is, the, here's your purchase orders. We were in the vendor side of things. Um, I really appreciate Shipping Easy's integration into the mm -hmm. seller side because we mm -hmm. are done with that honeymoon with Amazon, <laughs> being a vendor in there. Like, adios yeah. to that. No more. Um, they really take a lot of control away from your brand uh -huh. and your pricing in the vendor side of things. You know, it's a sweet deal. I mean, they just they pump it all all the money to you, but it's just like. You know, it's like sticky candy that you just can't get rid of. And it's like, I'm done with this. I'm done <laughs> sure, with it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but moving over to the Seller Central and Shipping Easy, their integration, that is just, I mean, that is, that's great. So it was about two years ago, we, we started to shift from there. And we actually started to shift away from um, being more wholesale focused and doing these shows in Atlanta and New York. Mm -hmm. And just really focusing on our, uh, on our internet presence. And uh um, and so we were putting money into a website. We had tried some other shipping things. We were having issues with like inventory control. Um, and I don't even remember how we heard about shipping easy. Is that Nino or 
I think it was Nino. Was, was it Nino? Right? Yeah, it's just a guy that was helping yeah. us out with our with our website. Um, oh, that's and right. uh, um, yeah, and uh, and just it integrated so seamlessly in there. Um, that's great. And one of the things is like you know we started off doing just Moscow Mule mugs, and they were they're, they're wonderful. <laughs> they're beautiful. <laughs> We did a lot of them, um, but uh, you know, I and then I just like, well, instead of like putting in a pool and buying some new cars, I'm gonna just like expand my product line um, and started making cookware and other homewares. And I'm glad that I did because yeah. we have the Moscow Mule trend ran; those legs ran out, and we fortunately have had other things to fall onto. Yeah, well, um, they they may pick up after this, after everybody. Yes, them I'm them, sure. So that, I, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good easy bump. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we threw the uh, link to your website in the chat. We'll go ahead and do that again for those of you who may have come in after and didn't get a chance to see that. Um, and so, yeah, uh, kind of, a, you know, to, to follow that up, Jonathan, what, um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm ecstatic to hear that Shipping Easy was, you know, a seamless fit for you guys in terms of what you were looking to do and moving away from shipping out of the back end of a e-commerce platform. And we hear that a lot every day, you know, from customers that sign up where they don't, they either have, you know, multiple e-commerce um, stores and they want to kind of consolidate all of their orders in one place to where they can, you know, get their shipping done just in one, one area without having to log into each place. Um, what, what kind of challenges were you facing other than kind of Amazon being Amazon and kind of having their hands deep in, you know, everything that happens there, just, I guess, in terms of like logistics and shipping, um, getting things out, you know, to people across the country, across the world in a timely manner, kind of what, what problems were you facing and how did shipping easy fit into that equation and hopefully alleviate some of that for you? Yeah, really. The, yeah, yeah. The, the integration with all the with all the different sites. Um, we have a bunch of different kinds of customers, um, whether it's drop ship um, or retail clients, mm -hmm. um, different portals, and keeping track of all the inventory and everything through there. And uh, shipping easy just really allowed us to kind of bring a lot of that, you know, centralized. And, th and there still are some people that we work with where. You know, last year they didn't integrate with Shipping Easy, and now they're like, "Oh, well, would you like for us to integrate with Shipping Easy?" And we're like, "Hell yes! We've been waiting for that for like two years now." Yeah. Um, and and just so we can, you know, our our inventory managed, especially last year. Last year was like the year that we were, you know, Shipping Easy really like, you know, before it was it was like it was convenient, it was nice, but last year like Shipping Easy like really helped us out mm -hmm. with. You know the whole COVID thing. Sure. Um, our business, you know, online business yeah. everywhere just boomed, and next thing we knew, it was just like, you know, stuff was flying out the door everywhere, and just like, you know, keeping control of our inventory and you know, through all the different avenues that it was going out, and uh, that was um, that was a real it was a real lifesaver for us um, being able to track all that. Yeah, the, it definitely the inventory was a, a big bonus for us and mm -hmm. keeping track because, you know, everything that we make is hand, it's all handmade. Right. You know, it isn't machine press. So it takes time. And in order for us to be able to really look at our numbers coming in with all these other, you know, portals of, you know, our uh, dropship customers and even wholesale customers coming on and, and even our own website just, you know, um, taking off or, you know, like John said, exploding. Um, yeah. It just really, really helped us uh, be able to take a look at the numbers and be able to know like what we need to put in production to be able to succeed, especially for the fourth quarter. Yeah. There's so many systems out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not much on, uh, you know, like me putting together a system. I'm not so great at like organizing all of that. Um, yes. But, uh, um, but the, these systems that you can like plug in, it just, I'm amazed at how much, how much it alleviates our workload. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And now, do you have other than other than Michelle? Do you have other employees that have come on to work with you? And and if so, have have they found it easy to you know navigate the website and get what they need? Oh yeah, very yeah. much. Um, we've got three other folks here in Austin. Um, 
And before, when we were doing it before, there were like, we had seven people here. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was just the, you know, and, and shipping easy is a part of what has allowed us to just kind of like streamline, uh, streamline that and make everyone's job easier. Um, with the shipping, I remember, you know, y'all in the office would be like, oh, we have to enter it into here and then we have to put it over here and then it has to go here and then we have to do our inventory and it's it got to go to QuickBooks and, and yeah, it was just like so much wasted time and uh, sure. uh, please bring on the robot revolution. Let them come <laughs> in and, like take care of all those little things, you know, free us from our labors. Well, it was also wonderful too, because like John said, everything was is integrated in with shipping easy and mm -hmm. now we don't have to go. Uh, you know, somebody's out of office or somebody was handling something uh, um, and, you know, the other person isn't very, you know, or isn't knowledgeable about this order going out. Everything's in there. Everything's streamlined. Everything's being pulled into shipping easy. I think we still have a couple of portals that I'm still bugging them to see if we can get them to, you know. Yeah, like they're, they're with old you guys. school. They're yeah. kind of old school. Like Neiman Marcus. <laughs> Neiman Marcus will, they're just won't so like, it. yeah, they're so 1950. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really? yeah. Like I still have to invoice them. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They just have a different, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's certain companies, I mean, and that's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I. But like I, Fair just recently, I think. Fair did recently some kind did of that. Yeah. We finally were able to integrate with Fair, which has been uh, actually wonderful because we are not, we are no longer going to be rounding the markets and having to set up booths and, yeah you yeah know, we dropped we that. dropped out of the our showrooms in las vegas and atlanta so, um, and are really just focusing on the uh reaching people more directly um through uh, other through the websites. internet yeah the other through websites. the internet too do you do any kind of like email marketing or or you yeah know, we ads do. or things like that we do and you know I, there was a uh, we connected with a guy who uh, had been doing working with the websites and internet marketing for 20 years and was actually a friend from high school that had just uh, Todd who works with us was like, Oh, Brian's, you know, mm -hmm. asking if anybody needs any help with any internet stuff. And, uh, and he just kind of put all these pieces on the back end. And what we use, uh, we use for email. Um, we have this, program i don't i think that i used something with sh with shipping easy at first there was like a little marketing thing that y'all had yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah. that. and that was that was great uh, you know we have you know we have we have another one that's a little more i guess robust for the whole um process product specific and thing and there's just so many different tools out there that um that integrate with all of that sure which could, i mean that's a great yeah i am always follow curious. Up is so key we get so much business yeah, yeah. off of our email yeah our yeah probably one of our best marketing platforms i mean that's really it's customer service really that's yeah that's how you're it's not like we're selling to them we're like hey what's going on uh, right right so would you say you know and and for for business owners you know on on this call or people that might watch the video later um you know you've you've mentioned you know kind of the follow-up with the email and also customer service um that's that kind of goes hand you have to excel so in both key. of those in yeah, order to so succeed key to, yeah. so key to like making customers like happy and you know because they're not touching it and talking to you in the store and like oh i oh i see what you're talking about it's shiny it feels good and mm -hmm. you know it's like they kind of got it they got it they extend a certain amount of trust uh to us and and we we put a lot of work into uh Oh, Michelle's she's so awesome <laughs> she makes everybody feel so wonderful and okay. uh, just that person that personal interaction and yeah and feeling like that touch like they are being you know you are being touched yeah. and and yeah. you are respect we very much respect our clients and whatever's going on with them so whatever allows us to attend to them better um, is just super key for us being successful and longevity and people yeah coming back to us and people saying, oh, you need to go talk to those guys because you want copper. This is what you need to talk to. Like you're actually sure. going to speak with, you may call the, you may call the, the company line. You might actually end up speaking with the owner himself. Like we, you know, like it, it ties into what we was, John was discussing earlier. It's, you know, it's all about the story and it's a story mm -hmm. of the product and how uh, it came about. And, you know, we'd like people to realize that, you know, you're not being answered by bots. You're not being answered by anything, you know, 
we're a small company. We're so, you, know, you know, we do have yeah. the bots or somewhat. I mean, but it's but it all is with our it all is with yeah. our own personal touch to it. Yeah. Sure, there's a, there's there's been thought that has yeah. been put been put into that. That that completely makes sense. Yeah. You know, you know what would you say to new on entrepreneurs? You know, either looking to grow their business or um, you know, or just getting started, what would be, you know, just maybe one or two things that you wish you'd knew, you knew about, uh, you know, starting a business back when you started. Oh God. I know it's such a loaded question. All the things that I didn't know. <laughs> maybe pick uh, one or two right now. And then yeah. we have a couple questions for you, I, um, I, from, from people on, on the call here. Sure. I think, uh, you know, definitely one thing is just like, you know, there's something you have an idea, you have some kind of vision. There's something in that vision that it like wants to work itself out that like you, you know, the world wants to see and that you want to like sh share with the world. And in some sense, you're not really going to find out what that is until you just put it out there and, and don't give up and just keep pushing it forward. And, and something is going to give and you're going to have something is going to come out of that. Um, and just kind of keep pushing, but be, you know, be, be open to maybe you don't know exactly what it is. I guess I never did mark like, Oh, I'm going to do a marketing study and this is what this needs. So mm -hmm. I can't speak to, I can just speak to doing it by the seat of your pants. And if you got a good idea, go with it. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I, I think it's so much, e it's very easy for us to talk ourselves out of things. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. So no, I really appreciate that. Um, Okay, um, a couple of questions from uh, from the people on the call. Um, what have you found? What social media is best for selling? Do you use any? Uh, do you use Shopify or any other website? We use uh, Shopify, and I don't find that. Well, I, I think we recently started like a, so Facebook ads. Um, somebody's kind of running that. That does pretty good. Um, does all right. Mm -hmm. it's about a 15% cost on ads for a return or return. Um, and uh, Instagram is nice just for like, you know, just kind of telling a story. And so it like gives us like background, but we don't really sell a lot of stuff through Instagram. We'll do like promotions. Oh, this is for sale. And, you know, and kind of like tracking that. I should have my web guy here on, on, cause he would be like, Oh, well you got this many sales from that uh, email. <laughs> our email list is good and just our, you know, our keep a hold of your clients and just keep yeah. them engaged. Um, and and, you and do you, are, do you collect, uh, you know, like email addresses from the website? People can sign up for like a newsletter or something like that. Definitely. The, okay, yeah, great. Signing up, signing up for a newsletter and then we have them in there and then we'll do promotions or let them know what we got new products or, you know, we're working on and, about on average, you know, just without running like, you know, a holiday say or something like that. But um, what, what would you say? How many emails do you send out like in a, in a month? Um, just a letting month. people know maybe new products or something like that. We probably send out, um, oh, 10,000 emails a month. So we do, mm -hmm. we can do notify people like two, two or three times. We've got about four to 5,000 people on our, on our email list. That's great. Um, I think it's only. It's like thirty five hundred to four thousand. Yeah, but uh, we only do like maybe two or three a, a month. Yeah, so that's that's about. Oh yeah, no, but it's only like 10, two. Oh, emails. I thought he was saying per month. But... Yeah, it's about ten thousand emails. We do about ten thousand emails a month. Um, okay, great, uh, great. A month. A month. Oh, talking about. Oh, sorry. Okay. She's not sorry. real good at math. But I, she's great at it's talking. The, to people. It's the end of the day. I was like ten thousand emails a month. No, it's. I mean, it's. It's like it's a few a month, but it's hot out here too. That it is. We're in the warehouse. <laughs> I'm like, ah, this is why you need your copper mug here in the, the, to cool you off, right? This drink uh, is amazing, by the way. I love yeah. the Fernet. I love the Fernet Mule. This is uh, great. This is delicious, actually. I and I want to pop this ginger in my mouth really bad. Yeah, we'll go for it. Nothing stop. <laughs> we won't stop you. You go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't. We don't do. Uh, we don't pepper too many but it's it really is like it's the way for us to or a way for john to be able to communicate especially with our community of mm -hmm. the products that we have coming out and and then you know we'll have a, a sale for a couple of days we don't we're not a website that has like a constant sale going on mm -hmm. we don't 
do anything like that, but occasionally we'll put out a promotion for, especially for some new products. Um, and then of course, uh, for the holiday seat, you know, the yeah. main holidays, like, you know, your father's day, your mother's day. And I mean, it's we like to touch retail. everybody about, you know, twice a month and, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and so it's about, yeah, we've got about, you know, we're definitely, our email list is what we really enjoy growing. Um, yeah, sure. that's our, that's the best marketing. Um, so, but for social media, I mean, we have a Facebook group. I don't get in there that much. I've just, there's so much, so many things calling for your attention. Yeah. There's a lot, the there's time. a lot to keep track of. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, the benefit of getting that personal touch and talking to somebody. Um, have you, uh, have you ever had a need to call into shipping easy for any problem? And, and if so, kind of what was that experience like for you? Oh yeah. You guys are like yeah. right on it. We love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. I just went yeah. to someone got last a problem. week. Well, our, our guy, the, our main shipping guy, El Todd, um, <laughs> always asks y'all, you know, when are you bringing over tacos? Because <laughs> you're, you're also here in Austin. He's like, listen, I need this and this and this. And, and some tacos. And three tacos. There you go. Hey, you can <laughs> ask, right? Apparently, There's no harm in that. As, apparently he's known as Taco Todd. Taco you know? Todd. Taco Todd. Hey, you know. Taco Todd. We've got we got somebody from our support uh team on the call. So maybe, maybe she knows and Taco Todd or has spoken to Taco Todd before. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that, Shanna? That I'm sure I've spoken to Taco Todd. I'm sure you have. I'm sure uh -huh. you have. Um, yeah, no, you know, we've I'm sure he hasn't received any tacos from you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Great. I ask about that. Too. Great. I know we're on the hook for this still. You know, that's that is something that we um, take a lot of, you know, pride in in terms of as, as a company, especially these days. Um, you know, it's rare that you get to speak to somebody, you know, who actually knows what they're talking about, who wants to, you know, legitimately help you without having to jump through either a bunch of hoops or be on, you know, on hold for, you know, a long time. And uh, that's something that we do take a lot of pride in. And, and our, our support team is, is about the best in the business. So I'm glad that you had that experience. It's great. Um, Y'all do yeah. have a great customer service. Mm -hmm. that's, we, we really, we really appreciate that, especially as, you know, a business that puts a lot into that. We recognize when somebody mm -hmm. else, um, offers, you know, the same kind of level of service and attention to the customer. And that really makes us pleased with, you know, dealing with you guys. Yeah. Right. I just spoke with someone last week. They were fantastic. So glad to hear that. That's awesome. Um, as you've been in the software for a while now, you've seen it change a lot. Um, what are some of the, the features that, that you found to be, you know, most, most helpful in terms of, just process, you know, maybe customer retention or, or just simplifying your, your workflow. Um, any particular features in the software that, that you like or that you kind of lean on? Hmm. I think, uh, you know, Todd would be the one to speak to about that. He's, he's, okay. he's in there working on it, but he left for Houston in an RV and he's not coming back for another like 10 days. So I don't, I can't, I can't oh man. So well. yeah. Gonna go find but, himself some tacos out there on the road. Yeah, he is yeah. Yeah. for yeah. tacos, tacos and seafood. But I would say what I really enjoy is uh, I used to use the, the email thing quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Me kind of handling all of that. It was really nice. It was a lot of like, I just couldn't believe how much, um, utility there i was like oh i'm getting this so that i can like do my shipping and then i got in there and i was like wow i'm going to do my email marketing here yeah i get my i'm going to tie my inventory in here uh and for us i think the inventory management the inventory history how we can go back and look through all of that seeing where things uh seeing, seeing where things went um, mm -hmm. that has been uh really helpful for us as we're you know, trying to get all of our, especially with last year, just trying to get all of our inventory under control. And I, and I think that I was just thinking about this today, um, how, you know, as we're growing, we, we're also kind of changing how we handle our packaging, our shipping. And mm -hmm. that I just feel like there, that I just need, I just need to dig around a little bit more in shipping easy. And I'm going to find a bunch more mm -hmm. like things that you guys have that we haven't even utilized kind of like our brains, I mean, maybe <laughs> 20%. <laughs> That yeah, just reminded me. I did some great campaigns last year through Shipping Easy. Uh, some great marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I've been I've been kind of 
running around quite a bit. So I need to. Sure. Need to no, we form that out to somebody else. So she doesn't have to do that. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it is, it is one of those features, you know, that, that, you know, when, when the uh, it's the customer marketing tool is what you're referring to. And, and when it was created was really out of a, you know, uh, a conversation like this with customers We're obviously we, we love to hear, you know, how our customers feel about the software. And, and, and so we've been doing this a long time. Um, and it was really kind of like, I'm a new business. I don't have a bunch of money to spend on a fancy email tool. Um, you know, can you guys do something since you have the information of my customers that are coming in? And that's kind of really the idea as to why, you know, it was put together. And um, we've, you know, you guys are testament to it. The people that have used it, have tried it. Um, it's been easy to kind of get up and going and um, everything's kind of right there. So um, oh yeah, I'm glad to, to find, to hear that it, you found it yeah. useful too when, when it came out. There, the thing that I, I was really impressed when I found Shipping Easy, I was just like, wow, there's, there's, it was just made so many different tasks. It centralized it and and made it easy and accessible whereas before i've been trying to like piece all these things together from so many different areas and it was all in one spot and i had one i could just reach out to one customer service agent and get answers to all of those different questions yeah great. and i think that you know especially for someone that's starting out and they're trying to build their internet business it, it just like my god if i'd had all of this stuff instead of like yeah. phone books and the seat of my pants driving around in a truck back <laughs> then i just i i don't know where i'd be right now yeah right here i mean it's, <laughs> it's completely different just even than the last couple since we started yeah. with shipping easy yeah. yeah it's it's a it's a there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there that um i think really helps somebody that's trying to launch something um get something going Great. Yeah, no, I'm glad to hear you say that. And we got we got more good stuff coming. So I won't give I too much of it away, but um, there's there's good stuff coming. Um, well, listen, guys, uh, we're we're getting close to time, and I'm going to turn this back over to Rob. He's got better hair than I do. So, uh, <laughs> Are you kidding? Sure Look at that all he, that. I, well, he, it's just yeah. in the wrong place. But uh -huh. you know, <laughs> but um, you know, from from me to you guys, uh, Jonathan, Michelle, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for your time and um, you know, for for what you've been able to encourage us with in terms of your story. And um, so, Rob, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. You can kind of uh, close us out for the mm -hmm. evening. Thank you, Josh. I could never compete with that magnificent beard that you have, so <laughs> take pride in that. <laughs> uh, thank you again to to our guests for for joining us today. Like this has been a great conversation. It's been awesome to get to know you. Just get to see the people behind the brand. Um, I think that's always important. I do want to let everybody know that there will be a recording coming out tomorrow via email. So we have been recording this, and we'll have that available to you. And also we hope to do more of these meetups. So if you know someone uh, that you think should be nominated for this, or if you think you would be a good candidate for this, please either send us an email or reach out to me or Josh on LinkedIn. Uh, we're more than happy to take requests and, and kind of start building a list so we can have more of these in the future. Also, if you're not already a Shipping Easy customer, please make sure that you check us out at shippingeasy.com and uh, give us a try and find out if you have the same type of experience that, uh, that these guys have had. So thank you everyone for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Cheers with your Moscow mules and have a good evening.